One replay that's the focus of our attention. Our commentator in Tullamore is Ger Canning. Dermot Lawler was the only Kilkenny forward who started in the drawn match to actually score. His goal being the reason we're all back here again. That uh, shyness in front of goal results in some minor restructuring. Pat Farrell is now listed at right half forward alongside newcomer Jim McDermott. Sean Ryan replaced three weeks ago as back at full forward on a day when the Cats expelled uh, a healthier return from star senior PJ Delaney. Galway call on Michael Kearns, who was involved against Cork in the semi-final and plays in midfield today, hoping to break the Leinster champions' dominance here. Elsewhere, manager John Cody and the selectors leave well and good alone, so there's a return for Nigel Shocknessy to centre-half back and Peter Kelly to corner forward, both of whom were substituted in the original tie. The heads are brothers, indeed Morris the corner forward, finished the first match here with a goal and three points. Johnny MacDonald from Tipperary taking charge of this replay. Conditions quite different from the last day we were here. Very tricky, wet, damp, miserable afternoon here. The first chop down there against Jim McDermott. Galway have the free. Liam Burke, the team captain hoping to give his side the early advantage that's trailed away to the left-hand side. Joe Dermody highly rated down around Kilkenny. Against the wind. Knocked down there by Nigel Shocknessy. Brought it on by Liam Burke. Tony Kerwin feeding it back to there towards Joe McGrath. Ran on as Jackson, of course, centre half forward. That's broken up by Dan O'Neill for Kilkenny. Lovely little flick forward there by Burke again. And in the end, it's David Byrne, Kilkenny's team captain, lofting that ball forward. Won by David Panic. Andy Comerford moves to midfield for this match. Nice little move away here as we watch Dermot Lawler try to set up a Kilkenny attack, which is broken up rapidly. Comerford again, looking for the first point of the match. Trying to come to terms with the breeze, so it's a wide apiece. Indication of the strength of the wind this afternoon. Galway won the toss and opted to play with the elements at their back for the first 30 minutes. Morgan Darcy getting great length into it. In there between half forward and full forward. It's Liam Burke racing through. Shades of the goal he got the last day, but he's put it wide. Well, it was shaping up for another adventurous run there, which might have yielded a score, and he should have done so. This was Burke coming in, making sure he was avoiding any possible blocks, winning the race. That should have been Galway's first score. And pass outside to Pat Farrell. Good man to get a score, as we saw here in the draw match has won the free in fouled by Ronan Walsh under the rain and the wind is into the face of Dermot Lawler but he makes little of it and the first score has taken a little over six minutes to produce coming from that free very good sizable attendance this afternoon not quite as large as the last day but when you consider the wretched afternoon it's a, it's a good figure nonetheless. Ronan Walsh maintaining his balance somehow. Away to the left-hand side towards Morris Head. David Byrne getting there first time. This is Tony Kerwin for Galway. Winning the race against Dan O'Neill. Kerwin hand-passing it forward. Intended for Morris Head. David Byrne beaten. Kerwin's on his way outside the 20-meter line. And he raises a white flag. Tony Kerwin, the scorer. So the first point of the match from play. Credited to Galway. Nice pass here, coming back from Morris Head. And in fact, it was Kerwin who followed it up, beating David Byrne. And just getting it inside the far post. Not such a pleasant day. Galway coming forward again. Liam Burke, so they set up the challenge here for Francis Ford. Ford to excel in the first match, has got a point, and Galway going front for the first time in the game. The two wing forwards have scored in the last two attacks. 
Galway were trying to make sure that today they didn't leave a title behind them. Bidding to deny Kilkenny the grand treble. We're ten minutes into this match. Francis Ford in there once again. Getting support here from Joe McGraw. This is a very good Kilkenny half, or Galway half forward line. Tony Kerwin shot. Stopped by Come Joe Dermody. Kilkenny half back line will have to be on their game this afternoon. That was a super catch by Canis Brennan. Called by Michael Kearns. Dan O'Neill, the taker of the free. Low into the wind. One there by Kenneth Spreaden. Pat Farrell having difficulty taking the ball up onto his stick because of the very tricky underfoot conditions. It's a panoramic view here of O'Connor Park in Tullamore as we watch Ronan Walsh take a sideline cut. The pressure back on his defence again, however. Sean Ryan bottled up there by Galway fullback Billy Burke. Nigel Shocknessy leaves it behind, he's supported however by Ronan Walsh who had to be very careful that he didn't ever carry the ball. Dermot Lawler now swinging on out and he puts it over the bar. A second point for Dermot Lawler and the match is tied up for two points apiece. It has the makings of a very close encounter indeed as Marr did the dispossessing there of Ronan Walsh. And then Lawler had the strength to get away from David Canning and make the score. Long puck out, not quite as long as some of the earlier ones from Morgan Darcy. Dan O'Neill in some trouble over there. Tony Kerwin's a very hard, tricky operator. You can see just how much trouble they're having getting the ball up into the sticks. Joe Walsh succeeding, providing the fodder inside, which is claimed in there by Philly Larkin. Well, his dad would have been proud of that one. A fine catch, a good relieving clearance as well, but the pressure very much on the Cats' back line. Michael Donoghue, he looks a very tidy hurler. Another fine cut inside. In towards Coleman. Morris head right across the face of the goal. Is the chance here yet? And it's a goal! Francis for the goal scorer. A goal after 13 minutes. Separating the sides. There was some good inline hurling here. The back line was in real trouble. Morris head right across, missed by Peter Kelly. And then watch as Ford steadied himself, lifted and struck magnificently. That's a great goal, but the back line really were at sixes and sevens. And Francis Ford saw a little gap. Roland Walsh here. Again, ball knocked forward towards Peter Kelly this time. Players calling for it all around the place. On for Liam Burke. On towards Morris Head. Head now. Getting away from the would-be tackle of David Byrne. Eamon Kennedy here on his left-hand side. The centre-half back. Swinging in the clearance towards midfield. You all will remember playing with the elements of their backs in the first half. As we watch Willie Burke try to come out with that one. Nigel Shock to see now. Day for doing the simple things well. David Byrne in trouble again. Boris Head, third inside. Ah, oh, that's gone wide. It was Damien Coleman who had the chance. Damien Coleman had a glorious chance. Hang, 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 like at half back and at full back, Kilkenny do not look all that terribly happy. David Byrne was dispossessed by Morris Head. Coleman was just ahead of him. That was a really good chance. Kilkenny trying to ring the changes there, moving Sean Ryan to right half forward and PJ Delaney in on uh, Michael Houlihan at full forward. Morris Head. Nice ball inside. Again, some consternation in there. David Burns sweeping it away. Challenged by Peter Kelly. Kenny captain effectively playing as a sweeper behind the other defenders. Francis Ford. 
Beautifully cut over from the sideline. So that's a goal and two points now for Francis Ford. Lovely skill, brilliantly executed here by the right half forward, straight between the two tall posts. Softnessy there getting very tight on Jim McDermott, forcing it out of the sideline. Conditions now much worse than when the game started, which was 21 minutes ago. Tannis Brennan trying to cut it in there. Willie Burke in some trouble this time. It's far going in, taken down. He's got a penalty for Bruce's play on. He fell over. Oh, the Kentucky fans aren't too pleased with that decision. That's Mike Donahue, he gets it away. Coach Tony Kerwin. This is the incident once again as the player going in there was taken down, it seemed, from here. This is the action where he was bundled over. There was no penalty. On well, three to two points, six points to two, and you can just see the water trickling down the lens of the camera up here. From behind the goal, it's a bit drier. And Morris Head has put it over. A goal at four points now for Galway, two points for Kilkenny, so five between them. Joe Dermody. Nigel Shocknessy wins it. Dan O'Neill, pursuit over there. O'Neill is on his way. Making a lot of headway. Dermot Lawler over there, somewhere. Dan O'Neill flinging it across here. It's claimed well by Roman Walsh. Down towards Joe McGrath. Galway have uh, done really well in this first half. They've defended tenaciously, but they've only taken one four of the many chances that have come their way. And it's Philly Larkin in there against Joe McGrath. Referee once again indicating that he'll break the stalemate with a throw. Joe and Eamon Kennedy. For a three fresh air pucks. And once again it's Joe McGrath. Hand pass across where Tony Kerwin was, but he ran into a stern frontal challenge by Michael Houlihan. Galway have the free. A minute now to go to half time. Morris Head. Tag on another point. So it's 1 5 against two points, a margin of six. Close now to half time. Ball won again at midfield by Michael Kearns. Steadied very well alongside Liam Burke. Morris Head running off it against David Burke. Takes it up brilliantly. There's another score here for Galway. Peter Kelly has it. Oh, he's dropped it. And Dan O'Neill comes away with it for Kilkenny. And on a drier day, surely you'd have put your money on a Galway goal there. Well, the crowd here still wondering just how this one failed to hit the back of the net. Morris Head played it into Peter Kelly, dropped it down. The goalkeeper came out. It was Dan O'Neill who swept it away. Pressure on Kilkenny once again. Peter Kelly beaten this time. Michael Hullahan getting it out. Only as far as Tony Kerwin. And passing it back to Michael Kearns. Going for the point. Making it count. So after all that pressure, Galway get a score. A point from their midfield player, Michael Kearns. The half-time whistle sounds. Galway did most of the pressing. 
Kilkenny, as in the first game three weeks ago, just got one point from play in the first half. But on this occasion, they've only scored two points in all. On a rain-lashed afternoon at Tullamore, the half-time score reads, Galway 1-6, Kilkenny 2 points. Everybody keyed up and anxious to get the throw in at the start of the second half. So nine points for Galway, 1-6, two for Kilkenny. Nigel Schock to see straight away. We had another heavy downpour of rain during the half-time. Damien Coleman now, coming out as he did in the draw match to left half forward. Inside towards Tony Kerwin. David Byrne coming across there. Ball picked up very low indeed by James Carroll. Knocked away straight off the bat there of uh, Michael Donoghue. Chopped down foul. The result in a free. Dan O'Neill giving this everything. Lobbed in there. Of course, Michael Owens, a goal scorer three weeks ago. Pat Farrell setting it up there for Delaney! PJ Delaney, the goal scorer. His first goal of the game. Indeed, his first score in a match and a half of under-21 finals. And the substitutes say, come on, we can do it yet. Just four points between them. Pat Farrell set it up. The backs allowed too many gaps, and Delaney walloped it in there. Morgan Darcy was powerless. There were a couple of backs there. Going in on the one forward. Delaney was let loose, and he doesn't miss chances like that. Morgan Darcy. At six to one, two. That goal has put a different complexion on the match. Liam Burke. Swallowed up by Kilkenny player. Still gets it across to Ronan Walsh. Michael Kearns now freezing in on goal, shouldered outside to Morris Head on the left hand side. A goal! Morris Head! An instant repost from Galway. Cyril Farrell there and some of the mentors on their feet, delighted with that score. It came like this. Morris Head fed the ball outside by Kearns for a tight angle. He made the most. For a minute there, I was wondering was he going to try and hit it on the right hand side. Went for the left, scored a goal. And Galway are back in charge again. Dan O'Neill reading the signal of the ball. But he's walked out over the sideline. A goal and two points for its tally as these two shape up to one another. Tony Kerwin is the Galway player involved here. And they're still exchanging pleasantries. Francis Ford there. Good ball inside. Ashley caught by Joe Dermody. David Byrne. Oh, he's left it behind here to Michael Kearns. The angle acute, just a little bit too. He blazed it away to the right. Come on, Ted, hurry up. Galway with 13 wide so far. Now under the pressure here from Andy Comerford. Dermot Lawler catches it well, maintains his balance. A bit like synchronized drowning at times here. That's in there well for Canis Brennan. Trying to draw that the goalkeeper doesn't like to see. Till Kenny coming in on mass. It's still there for the taking. And somehow it stays outside. Morgan Darcy and his goal leading a charm flight as the rain pours down here. Philly Larkin. Well, we haven't had a score now, I think, since those two goals which came in the first four minutes of the second half. Well, he's had a charm, life was... We've noticed Kilkenny making another change, but this, the save just on the goal line a few seconds ago, pursued by Sean Ryan, and somehow it stayed out. Delaney was there also. Still on the goal line. That's as near as they came. Nigel Shock to see emerging with the ball. Kilkenny converging on a woman there, Peter Hennessy, the number 20, has just come in as a substitute. The referee now calling aside the substitute, his very first action to have his name taken for a very clumsy and over-physical challenge. Here he goes again. Watch for 
the number 20 here, the referee indicted, going in too hard there. Oh, we get the free. David Canning is the taker. Ball knocked down from the hands there of Dan O'Neill. Liam Burke going back here. And the linesman signalling that he stepped out over the sideline. Well, if you're enjoying this match by the warmth of your firesides on this Sunday night, think of what it's like here on a Sunday afternoon. It's 25 past four and it's miserable. Joe McGrath trying to get Galway motoring again. Stuck on 2-6 for a while now. Peter Kelly. McGrath again. Held, pulled, and the referee says that's going to be a free in. Morris Head is the taker. He puts it over. That's the goal and three points now for Morris Head. It's my soppy notes at this stage are to be reliable. 2-7 to 1-2, 13 points to 5. Germany's puck out. Four corners. Tony Kerwin getting some assistance there. You can be sure that Galway really would extend themselves now to try and maintain their lead. They come up against very stern resistance from the Cats. How can Kenny need to score badly? That's gone over. Brilliant points from the midfield player. His first score of the day, he missed a couple of chances from play. There's only seven between them, but there's plenty of time left. This was a super strike. The falling conditions. Andy Cumberford knocking it forward there to Pat Farrell, now playing on the 40 against Nigel Shocknessy. Cumberford hooked, heading towards the sideline. Very careful to keep his opponent in view. Poland did really well, that's Damien Coleman. Galway introducing uh, a fresh player. Number 20 coming in is Conor O'Donovan from the Liam Mellows Club. Michael Donoghue. Double inside. It's Michael Hula who is standing firm against the shoulder there from Joe McGrath. McGrath picking it up. Blocked down by Dan O'Neill. Still McGrath. The referee is going to throw it in to end the uncertainty. Number 20, Conor O'Donovan is on the goal with team for number 14. Joe McGrath in there with Canis Brennan. And they're not exactly taking any prisoners, are they, these young under 21 players? Brennan is really fired up now. Young army man. He really went into that very strongly. McGrath was ready. Caught the leg there of Canis Brennan. I think Brennan caught the leg of McGrath. Brennan is back once again. This is Andy Cumberford. Blocked down there by a combination of Galway sticks. Brennan carries the ball forward. If anybody can do it for Kilkenny, it's Canis Brennan. Dermot Marr. Ball outside towards Dermot Lawler. Ball running away from him. Willie Burke is the fullback. Ball played back here. Pat Farrell striking in the mud, saved by the goalkeeper. Morgan Darcy produced a great save, but it mattered most. But his defence is still under great pressure. It's a goal! It's a goal for Kilkenny. A Kilkenny goal coming after all that pressure. Dermot Lawler, I think, is the goal scorer. All of that after Morgan Darcy had saved the tribesmen. Here's the action again. Farrell, stinging shot, saved on the line. And Dermot Lawler was in there to profit as this ball came back from the hoop. Farrell again in the thick of the action. Lawler makes the goal for Kilkenny. There's only four points between them. This goal coming at a critical stage for Dermot Lawler. I make it 11 minutes to go. It's anybody's match. So Galway have themselves a free on the 45 metre line. Morris Head has gone across to take it. 
to seven against two three blocked down there by James Carroll Andy, to 65. Andy. Andy. Morris head to take the 65 lobbed in there towards Joe McGrath ball spills loose and it's put over the bar by Francis Ford Francis Ford with a goal and three points extending Galway's lead at a critical stage in an early response to that goal by Dermot Lawler this is a very sharp young forward we'll hear a lot more of him in the future I'm certain it's a tough hard competitive afternoon's hurling the timing of the challenges may not always be exact, but the conditions are having a great bearing on that. Conor O'Donovan, locked down by Philly Larkin. Francis Ford going across with Canis Brennan. Pat Farrell once again. Nice ball inside. Taken away with style there by Dermot Lawler. On to PJ Delaney, stopped, and the goalkeeper in real trouble. Morgan Darcy saves his line there with the aid of David Canning. It's David Canning, the number four, who leaves it behind. Mistakes in uh, both defences right now. Dermot Lawler and Dermot Farr causing the problems. That's blocked down there. Was Andy Comerford who was attempting to strike it? Now, Owens. Good block down, Michael Owens again. And Galway's fans cheering on their team. Likewise, the Kilkenny faithful have come here, giving great cheers of support to their team. Eight minutes left. None of this will stay out. We're taking a look at it again. Farrell striking it in there. Goalkeeper on the line. They're hanging on somehow by a prayer. Liam Burke. 2-8 to 2-3. An inviting ball inside there. Blocked down to Kerwin. And it's a great save. Joe Dermott is sending his side at a critical stage, but stepping out over the end line. It's going to be a 65. I think it was Francis Ford, in fact, who hit that one. Let's take another look at this one. I think Francis Ford may be the one who got the final shot. It's a great save from Dermody. We've had so many goldmouth incidents in this game. Hard to believe it's uh, only 2-8 against 2-3. Morris Head. And we set for another grandstand finish. He's put it wide. That's the 15th wide of this match from Galway's point of view. Broken down at midfield towards Philly Larkin. Playing a much more committed role this afternoon. We're seeing an awful lot more of him. Canis Brennan. Now it's Andy Comerford. Ball nicely played forward here towards Pat Farrell. Farrell who can always get a score or two in a crisis situation. There's a goal here, surely there is! A terrific goal. Scored by the substitute. Peter Hennessy's goal has given these Kilkenny people new hope. Where once there were nine or seven points between the teams, the gap has closed considerably. Pat Farrell feeding the ball here on towards the substitute. And Hennessy put it past the goalkeeper. Back at the other end. Peter Kelly trying to set up a chance here for Head. Tight angle. And that's got to the side netting. Bounced off and it came back out again. It's end-to-end stuff in an enthralling under-21 final. Just two points separating the teams. 12 to 14. Still in Galway's favour. Can they hold on with five minutes left? Nigel Shock to see. Trying to win possession. Started so well. Let's tip the rate on Michael Donahue. Francis Ford now. Blocked there by Andy Comerford. Deafening cheers of support for both teams.
Galway get the free. That's uh, Colm O'Doherty coming in, as he did indeed in the original tie. Seems like it's Tony Kerwin who's going off. Now to shock to see. This ball is very important now. Can, can, can Kenny clear their lines and set up a scoring chance at the other end? Michael Houlihan. Nicely on towards Pat Farrell. Covering up, Dan O'Neill, bad one, Francis Ford, got the effects of that in the face as well. Michael Kearns, trying to extricate himself away from the would-be challenge there. So it's won back again by Michael Owens. Fed back to Dan O'Neill, 3-3 against 2-8. Two sides have given us another titanic struggle. Very, very difficult under the conditions. Dermot Barr gets to Nigel Shocknessy. Dermot Lawler, all beaten away, however. Andy Comerford striking it back in there. It's always struggling to get the ball clear. Shocknessy here, running into a stern but unfair shoulder of referee decides. Referee decided there was an elbow used there by Michael Owens. Earl Farrell is in there with the word of advice, the counsellor. Counselling the young Galway hurlers, what he hopes will be another 21 success, a sixth for the county. The struggle is on now, and the Kilkenny back on a sport, feeds the ball inside. Come on, Doherty has put it over the bar. The substitute is just in the match. His first action to increase Galway's lead to three points. Well, can the tribesmen now hold on, having lost the senior and the minor to the same opposition? Colombo Doherty with his first point. Kilkenny coming looking for a goal just as they did here three weeks ago. Delaney taken down. Kilkenny have a free in. I make it a minute and 25 seconds left. Plus possible injury time. Pat Farrell to hit it in. Inside, blocked out somehow. Dermot Lawler was really going to start him again. Callis Brennan releases it to a colleague inside there. John Owens. Michael Owens rather the one struggling there to try and get that ball up into a stick. And in the end, it's Tony Head with a long relieving clearance for Galway. A game that is certainly touching a raw nerve. Such commitment. Well, this has to be it. 45 seconds left as uh, Galway take the opportunity of bringing in Michael Kilkelly. Midfield replayed in the first match. In around the house it goes again. Michael Kearns striving to get that ball away there against the attention of Michael Owens. Kearns standing his balance. Pat Farrell. Nice ball across. And that's Delaney stopped somehow. And Galway through the side relief, taking the ball away. It's kicked out. The referee's whistle sounds. Michael Donahue kicked it away. It's going to be a free out. The number seven making the clearance. We're in injury time. Galway, who won this title, beating Offaly in 91. With David Canning here. Hitting the spree down deep. There's still a few seconds left. It's all over! And Galway have won! It was a titanic struggle. Never the same classic we had here towards the end of that match three weeks ago. But what a battle the two teams put up. Galway, I think, on balance over the two matches, deserve to win. Cyril Farrell will be pleased. John Cody, likewise, the coach, and the selectors. They won a famous victory here, denying Kilkenny the treble. So after all the heartbreak of losing in the senior and in the minor, and the way in which the lead was...
was swept away from them just three weeks ago. It's victory for the tribesmen. A reminder that it ended thus. Galway the champions by three points, 2-9 against Kilkenny's 3-3. Peter Quinn presenting the trophy, most unusual trophy, to Liam Burke, captain of Galway, the under-21 hurling champions. Down in Galway during the week, you know, for the last three weeks, they were saying, you know, how we'd lost our chance, having lost a 10-point lead, and we were hearing all this about not being able to beat Kilkenny in replay, but we were determined to prove the doubters wrong, we'd say, but uh, I think we did it in style today. And that goal you scored, a very special goal indeed. Let's take another look at it. Uh, yeah, it was a line ball that came in from Michal Dunhu. And it just broke from Damien Coleman. Morris, Morris head pulled, ac pulled it across, across the goal first time. I just picked it up. I was going to go past him first and I said I'd have a shot and in it went. I thought near the finish, one of them shots had to go in. I don't know how the Galway backs, they were using their heads, their legs, their feet, everything to keep, an out, keep, keep the ball out and very juice them. The kept was out and even the goalie was marvellous today and he saved the game from, you know, numerous times. But um, I don't think, I thought we were going to come back at some stage, but, but at the end of it, I think Galway would deserve, just probably deserved the win. Well, Morris heads goal, I, I think, it killed us because we, um, we were only four points behind at that stage and uh, he instantly scored another goal and I finished the match, I suppose, really. It was slippy enough, right? Like, it's one position you wouldn't like to be in if you're a goalkeeper. Like, you know, it's a uh, slipperish ball. Your last line defence won't slip up, like, in the ball at the back of the net. Let's see a bit of you in action. You can talk us through some of this. Yeah, right. Uh, there was a long ball hit in there from in around the midfield, and I saw the ball coming in. And it was coming up to me into my hand, but it just slipped away, and I was just trying to get it out of the, the goal area. And the helmet came off. Like, looking like I was in the right spot there to get the ball out of the way. Not just one save, but two or three saves in there. Just managed to get the ball away, that's all I was concerned about. And the second one we could look at? Uh -huh, yeah, there's uh, maybe a bit of loose marking there, like, and I was looking to see that uh, I got full view of the ball. And uh, like I said, I just wasn't like, going to let that ball pass me. I was thinking of the last day too, like the last day I was only semi-conscious about the okay, that I was in an all Ireland final, because the previous Sunday, over losing senior, I wasn't thinking straight. So I was out here to prove a point today that uh, they weren't going to get us this time, and luckily they didn't. And so then, Galway are All-Ireland Under-21 champions, but not before an afternoon of drama and excitement right up to the end again today at Tullamore. This time, however, Galway held out for that victory that had been theirs for the taking, or well, perhaps the first day. We're going to take a commercial break coming up in the next part of the programme, analysis, our man of game. Well, now let's take a look at the statistics from this afternoon's Under-21 hurling final replay. If Galway's big lead had been turned around by Kilkenny again today, they would surely have regretted the big number of wides they hit during the match, especially in the first half, it was 15 as opposed to Kilkenny's 8. Mind you, if Galway had been wayward in their shooting, Kilkenny will look back on the fact that they conceded twice as many frees as the winners, and that's a statistic that surely had a big bearing on the outcome of the match. Now let's turn again to our analyst, Kieran Barr. Kieran, Galway had to work hard for that, to say the very least, but I think they deserve to win in the end. They did, I think, uh, on both occasions, the, the, the first game and the replay, they were the better hurling team, and I think they were caught uh, on the hop in the first game. But today they seemed to play much more defensive-minded at times. They were very prepared to put their legs and their heads and their, their hurls in the, in, the, in the road of a ball going towards the goal. Um, I don't think people in Kilkenny will begrudge them this title because I think it's been yeah. sort of a bad season for them in terms of losing finals, and it's very disheartening for anybody in any sport to be getting to a final, putting in an awful lot of work, and then having no tangible uh, reward for it. So it's I, a, Yeah, it's an interesting thing. I was talking to a lot of Kilkenny people down at the, the Ploughing Championships and Clonmel during the week, and there seemed to be that sense that they wouldn't mind if Galway won because they felt that Galway need to, to remain there sort of at the top and hurling and that this would be important to you. I think it would as well. They've won minor championships and you've got to ch transform minors into under-21s into seniors and this is an important step for those players. Some of the players even on the fringes, fringes of this team may become important senior players. Franny Ford, for instance, had a, a, an excellent game today and the previous game. And someone like him now, having won a championship again, maybe won minor, now he's won under 21, he can say to himself, yeah, I've, I've been, I'm able to beat people, I'm able to win titles, and that will do a psychological confidence, a, a, a great boost. 
Let's take a look at a few aspects of this game because, as we said, Galway deserved to win on the day, but they also, as we said, made very hard work of it. It and did. Could have, it could have been easier for them. It could have been. We've seen the first instant a, um, a very good example of the way they can pass the ball around and Franny Ford ends up with a goal. Now, the ball comes in here and they, they show very good control um, in, the, in, in very bad conditions. The, the ground was very wet, the ball was slippy. Did they, they do the right thing here, keeping it moving across the goal. And he does exactly the right thing. He dummies the goal round, the guy very slightly, and then hammers the ball into the net. That was an extremely good goal. Uh, in difficult conditions, he controlled the ball well. The ball was worked in, in around the goal mouth, first of all, and then played across and pulling defenders across the pitch. That's an example of what they do well. But here's an example of overplaying the ball. The same idea. Um, the corner forward gets the ball and takes a run onto it. Could have scored himself. He decided to make that pass. And young Kelly drops the ball when it was a certain of a point or a goal, possibly when the first player should have played the ball directly. Mm -hmm. So they can overplay the ball too much, and I think that's what happened to them the first day. They had chances of taking points, and they went for goals, yeah. where they should have been just simply clocking up the scores and keeping the pressure on them. So they have got uh, both good and bad aspects to this play, that they overplay the ball a lot, they use the hand pass, they bring lots of players into the play, but sometimes when you make so many passes, it gives you a chance to make a mistake as well, and that's what tends to happen. Well, at the All-Ireland Senior Final, PJ Delaney scored a late goal in that game that really clinched it uh, for Kid Kenny. Today, he scored a critical goal again, but this time, I suppose, the difference was that Galway bounced back. We're in a position mm. to bounce back, maybe. I think even Delaney, as we'll see here from the goal, but he said in the interview that he felt that the goal that they scored straight after his was crucial. But we see here, this is typical Kilkenny play. It was a long ball in, and I think Farrell does very well, one of the, the, the forwards in here. Yeah. He gains possession and three players come to challenge him and he just releases it very quickly to Delaney. And the full back now will have to be called to go and one other the players who should have been marking tight on Delaney because there was nobody on Delaney and he was left right in front of the goals. Farrell does very well here, kicks and rides three challenges and just simply pops the ball out to Delaney who puts it in the back of the net. No defenders fault except for the guys who should have been marking Delaney. Now I felt that the momentum was with Kilkenny at that stage, but the perfect response one minute later. The ball is played in by uh, Ronan Walsh, and I think that's um, one of the midfielders gets the ball there, Kern, and a nice pass out the head. He controls it superbly first time, a wet ball on a heavy day, and on his weak side, puts him the back of the net. Now, within uh, a minute, uh, Kilkenny had brought them back and looked as if, here we go again, but yet Galway this time, I think, used their heads and said, right, let's gather, let's get momentum back again, and they went up the pitch and they were able to score a goal. And I, f I think that was a very crucial period in the game because if Galway had to let Kilkenny build up a few scores there and tag it back maybe to three, two points, yeah. you would have seen all those worries coming back into them. Here we go again. This is like the previous day. Are we going to hold these guys out? But that goal, I think, stopped the rot. Mind you, coming down to the last five or six minutes of the game, there was only a couple of points in it mm -hmm. in any way. It was exciting stuff, hectic stuff. Uh, also a little bit tattery, I suppose, in terms of the play. It was. I think we see from this uh, piece that we have next that the, the type of conditions didn't help the players either. And I think this time, a little of the naivety that Galway showed the first day was gone. They actually said to themselves, we'll get bodies behind the ball. And instead of just getting bodies behind the ball, we'll actually try and get a stick on a ball or block it or make a tackle instead of just falling back. You see here that the ball comes in and Lawler lifts it very, very well. A couple of players come to challenge him. He's out to Delaney. Keeper makes a great save, and instead of then looking for men, they scoop the ball out and get it out of the goal mouth, as he should do, immediately, and then worry about clearing it. Now, they should have cleared it there again. Can Kenny come back and put more pressure on them? Guys are now making challenges. They're pressurizing the person with possession and hunting in packs. So if the ball comes out here, there's a great block. Yeah. And the next guy, now the last day, they were making those uh, blocks and not clearing the ball in the end, but this time, bang. The right half back Walsh again clears the ball, and one of the forwards then gets fouled, and the pressure is relieved. The last day, I think I remember saying that Kilkelly had a, a chance to clear the ball, and he wasn't able to. We'll see here the goalkeeper making a great save at a bad angle, and then going down on a hurl that's being swung at him and scooping the ball out, keeping his eye on the ball, and out you go. And it's a very, very great piece of hurling. And then the defence as well, making sure the ball is cleared and the job is done properly at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So I think defensively, okay. It looked scrappy, it looked difficult, but Galway were, were determined not to let the ball into the goal and not to let uh, Kilkenny come back and steal the championship again from it. So the under-21 title goes to Galway. Looking at the Hurling Championship overall mm. this summer,